Hey Jesse, I'm going to show you the stuff that I wish I knew 10 years ago in my cycling background. Um, one thing that I've learned, especially in some of the continuing ed classes I've taken, like FRC, there's such a, uh, we have so many things that we just habitually do and we typically move in the same ways over and over again. And one of the big FRC principles is based around controlled articular rotations, which is CARS for short. And it's uh, small movements throughout the whole range of motion in your joints, head to toe, at least once a day. And the theory behind it is that if you're constantly moving around in an area, that movement's gonna be there for you when you need it, and you're not gonna notice that those areas are stiffening up. So I'll take you through a quick routine. What we're gonna do is start off with the neck, work our way into the mid body, down the legs, and all the way into the feet. So the first thing we do is we use radiation. And a radiation just means we tense a couple other muscles so that they're not moving when we want another part to move. So for instance, if I radiate by kind of squeezing my hands together, it's gonna to keep my shoulders a little bit stiffer so that when I go to do some of these rolls in my neck, I'm not getting my shoulders helping me with it. So first starting with the neck, we bring our chin all the way to our chest. From here, we roll all the way over to our right side. I'm doing it nice and slow and controlled. Look all the way overhead, reverse. Come back just a little bit further than you did in the first place. Over to the left side and come back nice and slow. I'm speeding it up a bit just for demonstration purposes, but we want to think it takes probably about five to 10 seconds to do each side. So nice and slow. And we're thinking of it as like, if we were sweeping up in a room, we don't want to miss any of the corners. We want to make sure that everything is getting accounted for. So if I bring my chin to my chest, I should keep that tension down into my neck. Roll it all the way to the right. Now I'm looking over my right shoulder as far as I can. And when I get up overhead, I'm looking back as far as I can. So that's for the neck. Into the shoulder blades, we're gonna take our arms, we're gonna make fists, and we're gonna pull the shoulders up, roll them back, press them down, and then roll them forward. So we've got four motions we're worried about, but eventually we're gonna turn it into this nice smooth circle. And you notice how my neck isn't bobbing back and forth or kind of helping me look like I'm getting further, I'm just getting the shoulder to work. I'm gonna do three to five reps on each side, both directions. For my middle back, I'm gonna take a little bit of a wider stance and I'm gonna kind of give myself a hug. So my elbows, I like to pretend that I'm using a pencil and I'm drawing the biggest possible circle that I can. So I start by tucking my head down. From here, I'm gonna draw a circle over in this direction. So I'm gonna side bend and extend. My elbows come up. I'm doing my best to keep the motion in my middle back. I'm not letting my lower back go all crazy. So just nice circle that direction. Reverse it back. All the way in the other direction. And then again, three to five reps each way. Keeps the mid back nice and healthy. Getting into the shoulders ourselves, we're gonna uh, start by making our shoulder as stiff as we can. So my right hand goes into my left armpit. And from here, I radiate a little bit, squeeze my bum, raise my arm up as high as I can over my head. Once I get here, I'm gonna keep my body as close to straight as I possibly can, and my arm stays as close to my body as possible. I'm almost pretending like I had a piece of glass right next to where I'm bringing my arm up. So I don't want my hand to touch the glass and I don't want my body to move around it. So it's just a cool tricky way of getting you used to kind of keeping that angle as close to the body as you can. Just pretend there's a pane of glass right here. Our elbows too need a little bit of love. So we're going to start with our fists, keep our arms nice and straight. And then you see when I bend my elbows, see this little carry angle that I have here. So my elbows have a little bit of a, a, an angle and everyone's a little bit different. So I want to keep my hands, pull them in, straighten them out. See how my carry angle changes, pull them out, bring them up, in, and down. So think of it as I'm just warming up that joint in the inside of my elbow. Um, for my wrists, I want to pretend like I've got the most expensive iPhones I could possibly get, the iPhone 45s, and I'm going to make sure that my wrist isn't moving like this because the elbow actually allows you to dip in a bit here too, so we just want the wrist to move. So if I take my hand like that to make sure nothing moves, I'm going to bring my wrist up, down, forward, to the side. So you'll notice the wrist doesn't move as much as people think it does. Just the, the distal wrist joint anyway. But if I let the rest of my body kind of play into it, my elbow gives me a lot more there. So I want to focus a little bit of attention into both my wrists. Three to five reps. Keeps the wrist nice and healthy and happy. Um, I could do a little bit more into my fingers and stuff, but that's for maybe another time. Getting into the middle back and into the lower back. Come into a tabletop position like this, and I'm going to start with um, a cat camel, but I'm going to break it down into segments. 
So if I start with my back in neutral, and then I go to round everything up, I'm going to think starting all the way from my tail, I'm going to start to extend. So I'm going to keep everything else flexed, slowly moving from the tail all the way up my mid-back, and at the very end, my shoulders extend, and then it's up. Again, reversing, up the chin first, let the mid-back come up, very slowly, pull in and right at the end, let the tail up. Two to three reps like that, we'll just make sure that all of those joints are participating and they're going to be there for you when you need it. Stand up, or you can do this kneeling, there's two different ways of doing it, I'll show you the standing version. But put a little balance into your right leg, you bring your left leg up and you flex it as high as you can. And I want to make sure that I'm not flexing my knee and having my back come along for the ride. I just want to make sure that the only thing moving is flexion in my hand. Once I get here, I can either use balance or I can use something to give me a little bit of support. And I'm going to keep my hips facing forward. I don't want my hips to shift. I just want my left leg to raise out to the side. So I'm going to abduct it. I'm going to internally rotate as best as I can while I try and bring my heel to the ceiling and keep my knee as high as I possibly can while I bring my hip around, just like I'm doing a big hurdle step. When I extend and do the opposite, I'm going to again think about keeping that knee and ankle as high as I can and then step back down. Doing the other side, bringing the knee up nice and tall, belt buckle is facing forward the whole way, bring my right leg out as far as I can, and then as I internally rotate, I'm fighting that tendency to let my hip lift up like this. So all the way back, extend the hip, hurdle step forward, and all the way down. Great for the hips, especially if you're doing lots of miles on the bike. To get the knees, very similar to what we're doing in the elbows, we're going to actually take our foot, we're going to hook underneath the bottom of our knee, and you can see how at the very top of my knee, you can see that little bit of movement. That's actually rotation of my knee. And a lot of people forget that the knee is very, very sensitive to rotation, right? The biggest reason why people get ACL tears and ruptures is because the knee can't handle that rotation. So we want to train it. We want to maintain it. We want to make sure that it's good. So I'm going to keep my heel just slightly off the ground. And not using my foot, I'm going to turn and externally rotate my tibia as best I can. Straighten my leg. Turn it in. And when I return back down, I should notice the little nub of my knee is pointing this way now. So I go from external rotation to internal rotation. From here, I can go back and do a couple reps. And then in the opposite direction. We do again both sides, three to five reps each side, nice and slow and methodical. Getting into the ankles, we're going to do a very similar movement, but we're going to lock out the tibia by just squeezing over top of that bone. And then pretending like our foot is a spatula and we're pulling that last little bit of Nutella out of the jar, and then it takes some nice, big rotations. So I'm gonna dorsiflex my foot, I'm gonna invert it, plantar flex, evert. Again, nice and slow. It's okay for the toes to go along for the ride for this too, but we really wanna make sure that the ankle is doing 99% of the work. If you do that every day, maybe even twice a day, once in the morning, once at night, your body's going to feel a whole lot better and those joints will be there for you when you need them.